It is Friday, September 2nd, 2011, and this is the second live edition of InfoWars Nightly News, Monday through Friday, premiering at 7 p.m. at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. We have a very important transmission lined up for you this evening. Coming up, we look at one of the biggest scandals in modern history, Barack Obama and the ATF have been caught shipping tens of thousands of guns into Mexico, Honduras, and to gangs in the U.S. as a pretext to destabilize these different regions and blame the Second Amendment. Will this modern Watergate bring down President Barack Obama and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives of Waco fame? We'll be talking to Larry Pratt a little bit later about his view. He's the head of Gun Owners of America. We're also going to be uh, speaking with Aaron Dykes and looking at a special report that he's compiled dealing with bisphenol A, a deadly chemical added to most plastic products that is being used to reduce fertility and massively increase cancer in the population to reduce the numbers of people upon the face of the earth. It's all coming up tonight, but first... I want to get into a couple of different news items. Libya, even earlier in the week, as rebels took more and more areas of the North African country, the Washington Post, the London Telegraph, had to admit, all over Libya and all over the capital of Tripoli, big piles of dead black Libyans. Now, Arabs are the majority in the country of Libya, but obviously there are a lot of black Africans in Africa, and there are always been part of the country and the region and because Gaddafi was more of a multiculturalist they were supporters of the government but most of them were not in the military well black women men children you name it are being drug out of their houses they're being shot in the back of the head they're being beaten they're being tortured I want to warn you that some of the footage we're about to show is very disturbing in fact this isn't even the worst stuff we have I made the call not to show a lot of this. This is people being hacked up with machetes, piles of dead children. This is the NATO humanitarian response to Libya, a conflict that the West started through al-Qaeda rebels in the East six months ago, now leading to a bloodbath civil war. Here's Rob Dew with that report. The destruction of the spirit of the people. We've seen racist accusations thrown at our leaders in the past. George Bush doesn't care about black people. But Barack Obama was supposed to be different. He was supposed to be a champion to all. But now we see that our participation in Libya and the current conflict is a direct correlation to the images you are about to see. Here we see the town of Tawurga and a massacre of the blacks that have lived there. Their hands were bound behind their backs and they were shot in the head. Black run businesses are being burned all across Libya and blacks are being rounded up in the back of pickups and taken to prison camps. The dogs of war have been unleashed, and we can expect to see more images of racist attacks on black Africans by Al-Qaeda-backed forces. The next time someone claims you're a racist for not supporting Obamacare, isn't the U.S. and NATO-backed genocide against black Africans the real racist agenda? Remember, Libya is not Bush's war. It was started by Barack Obama, a president who has roots in Africa and is using black cover to do the bidding of the New World Order. It is truly a disgusting travesty to watch this unfolding. I'm no fan of Muammar Gaddafi, the 42-year dictator, but we were told that the uprisings were spontaneous and nonviolent. And now even the mainstream media admits it was a fomented rebellion by the West and that this is the new model of globalist imperialism. To have rebels try to overthrow the government, of whatever country you're targeting, Syria, it doesn't matter, Libya, then when the government resists those rebels, NATO bombardments come in, followed by Western Special Forces on the ground. And I saw news reports today that heat-seeking missiles are falling into the hands of Al-Qaeda, who is now the new government of Libya. <laughs> Even I can't believe this. It's like I've woken up in the twilight zone. The globalists like to loot third world countries with military force, like we just saw in Libya. 
and then engage in genocide and call it humanitarian intervention. But in Europe, the United States, and other industrialized nations, they use high-tech forms of looting. Central banking. You'll remember Timberwolf, Goldman Sachs, and others in the last few years were implicated by their own emails selling products to their customers that they knew was, in their words, absolute S-H-I-T, and laughing about their customers. Now we got jobless numbers today. There's over 400,000 a month. We've got the slowest growth rate since the Depression, and we're adding zero jobs right now. But Goldman Sachs and their financed minion, Barack Hussein Obama, are telling us everything's okay. There's just one problem. The Wall Street Journal and the Economic Collapse blog has written about this, got a hold of an internal Goldman Sachs strategy paper by one of their top economists advising their insiders to bet on the total collapse of the world economy in the next three to six months. The headline reads, even Goldman Sachs secretly believes an economic collapse is coming. The Wall Street Journal had the headline, Goldman takes a dark view. Uh, I'd say they're taking a dark view. Goldman Sachs is at the tip top of the pyramid of this globalist power structure that's implementing the collapse of our society. If you think you've woken up in the twilight zone, you're wrong. You've woken up inside the eugenics-run New World Order, the scientific dictatorship. Yeah, it's crazy to see the United States and NATO hand Libya over to Al-Qaeda. Now they've got all those heat-seeking missiles. Don't worry, the government will take our rights and keep us safe. If you think it's unbelievable that the ATF would ship guns into Mexico and drugs back into the United States and nobody would get in trouble. This dark ride into the New World Order has only begun. This next report, filed by Aaron Dykes, is titled, Bisphenol A, Death by Plastic. This stuff is all around us. It's linked to cancer, conclusively proven. Uh, the doubling of diabetes cases in the last year and more. This is how the globalists are poisoning us. And Aaron Dykes has filed this extremely powerful report. You think it's just in plastic bottles? Think again. It's in almost everything. Scientists have known for decades, since the 1930s at least, and alternative news sources like Infowars.com have long documented that the compound bisphenol A, BPA, disrupts the hormonal system, causes infertility, and even cancer. But governments didn't warn about the dangers of BPA, widely used in plastic bottles, food cans, and soda cans, and until only a few years ago. For more on why, I filed this report for InfoWars Nightly News. This a lay. When you open up a can, that lining may contain a synthetic estrogen. That's right, a sex hormone. BPA is unsafe and can lead to cancer, diabetes, and other diseases. BPA is what is known as an endocrine disruptor. Canada became the first country in 2010 to ban the use of BPA in just some products, and Europe soon adopted many of these bans. However, in the U.S., the Food and Drug Administration has been much more reluctant to admit the dangers. The Food and Drug Administration is not ready to sound the alarm. The Food and Drug Administration says the chemical known as BPA is not dangerous. This despite the fact that a 2004 CDC study found BPA in the urine of well over 90 percent of the U.S. population. Consumer awareness has created a trend against its use in many products in lieu of a ban. But BPA, which can alter sexual behavior and much more, has increasingly been found in abundance in a wide range of products, many of which you may not expect. This includes most of the printed store receipts, money, printer ink, dental amalgams and fillings, baby formulas, cosmetics, and now similar estrogen mimicking hormones have even been found in top name brand clothing. Efforts to eliminate contact with bisphenol A, 
must combat with the increasing places it pops up unexpectedly in our modern lives. And what else could pop up? Research conducted at top institutes like Harvard and Yale found that BPA has widespread effects, including neurological, thyroid, and dopaminergic issues, obesity as well as low weight, fetal development, carcinogenic effects including breast and prostate cancer. Its impact on hormones in both men and women can negatively affect the reproductive and sexual system. Studies on lab animals including primates found permanent changes to the genital tract, changes in breast tissue predisposing to carcinogens, long-term reproductive and carcinogenic effects, increased prostate weight, early onset of puberty, longer estrus, decline in testosterone, increase of anogenital distance in both genders, greater sensitivity to hormones and cancer, decreased maternal behaviors, adverse neurological development, disrupted ovarian development, and reversal of normal sex differences in brain structure and development. But just reporting these scientific facts has caused Alex Jones to be attacked by Media Matters and others for supposed gay bashing. The reason there's so many gay people now is because it's a chemical warfare operation. I have the government documents where they said they're going to encourage homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children. I even catch myself, Bob, drinking out of these estrogen uh, mimickers. But the disruption of the body's endocrine system by pollutants put in place by man has nothing to do with sexual preference nor what God or nature intended. In 1994, the Pentagon admittedly sought the development of a, quote, gay bomb in which it would use non-lethal chemical weapons to disrupt hormones and create widespread homosexuality, but it's happening every day in a less dramatic fashion, and the products we eat and drink, touch, and come into contact with. Are we really afraid to face the reality of social engineering through chemical assault due to politically correct taboos? The elite have stated their eugenics and depopulation agenda ad nauseum, and yet for the past 50 years, sperm rates have continued to plummet, and BPA is admittedly linked to male infertility. We're losing our humanity to this chemical subterfuge through GMOs, BPA, and other materials. We face a children of men scenario of near total infertility, and we must own up to these facts before it's too late. Back to you, Alex. Thank you so much, Aaron. And I notice here, um, U.S. diabetes rate doubles in last decade. That's out of the Associated Press. Most cancers have doubled in the last 10 years. They're talking about almost complete infertility by 2025 in the Western world. And a big part of it is BPA. But if you talk about fish and uh, amphibians like frogs, now having their gender destroyed, you are being homophobic towards frogs. No, that is all just a globalist distraction to keep us from looking at the facts of what this system is truly engaging in. This is a nightmare situation that our society faces, and bisphenol A is only one small part of this larger program. The sodium fluoride in the water, the radioactive isotopes added with the fluoride in most water systems, the GMO with insect genes and plants and pesticides engineered into the plants. In every major animal study, it's reducing fertility or outright causing mutations and total sterilization within three generations in rats, guinea pigs, you name it. The truth is, Hitler picked up his whole eugenics program from the United States and England. I cover that in my seminal film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement. And after World War II, when they got embarrassed and the world woke up to them, they openly said in Eugenics Quarterly and other publications, we're going to go underground. We're going to repackage our system. We're going to hide things in the food and water, and we're going to get these people. And of course, John P. Holdren, the White House science czar, wrote, we need to come up with sterilants hidden in the food and water. So many others talked about it as well. Aldous Huxley, his brother, Julian Huxley, Bertrand Russell. It's up to you to go search out these facts and look it up for yourself and discover that this is the real issue, not what's coming up on television tonight on Dancing with the Stars. I hope you realize this is groundbreaking information, that it's up to you to research the facts for yourself and discover that not only are we telling you the truth, but it's far worse than we can even reveal to you here because there's so much evidence. Check it out for yourself. We're going to go to break and come back with a federal government program of shipping guns into Mexico and drugs back in the United States to destabilize North America and attack the Second Amendment. Larry Pratt and the ATF gun running scandal, straight ahead.
Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. Well, when the story of Fast and Furious began to come out in the last few months, it was really no surprise to us. We've known that the ATF has been involved in smuggling guns in Latin American countries for decades, even going back to Iran-Contra. But the fact that they were involved with the Sinaloa drug cartel shipping in cocaine, according to federal documents that we're going to cover here in a few minutes, even blew me away that this agency is so incredibly criminal. We know they love to barbecue men, women, and children at Waco, but the fact that they would try to destabilize all of Mexico just as a pretext to blame the Second Amendment is incredible. And now the head of the ATF has resigned. Their whole house of cards is coming down. It's now been confirmed that the White House was in control of this operation with as many as seven different federal agencies. This is a false flag operation run against the Second Amendment. And the cover-up all began, just like with Nixon and Watergate, with a Border Patrol agent that was killed by guns shipped in to Mexico by the ATF. With more on this incredible scandal that threatens to bring down the Obama crime operation is Larry Pratt, the executive director of Gun Owners of America, the only no compromise pro Second Amendment organization here in the United States. Larry Pratt, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to be with you, and I agree with your assessment. Uh, it made the scandal, the crime spree that the government has been on, it could possibly bring the president down before the next election. But my guess is that there is just so much investigating that's being done that Congressman Issa, who's the point of the spear on this, is not going to have things in a position uh, for that. But I do believe it will affect the election. And it will almost certainly guarantee that the president be a one-term president. He has refused to fire the people responsible for running guns into Mexico some 2,000 guns resulting being used in crimes that have taken the lives of about 200 people. Only 600 of the guns have been recovered. So there's a lot more crime coming down the road. And this, uh, I think once the Republican nominee gets a hold of this, if they don't do it beforehand, it's going to be lethal. Uh, because Obama and, and Holder, the attorney general, both refused to fire some of the people that have been involved in this. Uh, one man, the head of the ATF, they just moved him over to a nice cushy job in the Department of Justice to get him out of the limelight, they were hoping. Uh, what it did, though, was actually, uh, I think, make this case go beyond the breaking point. I think now the even the Democrat media is going to be dealing with it uh, reluctantly, as little as possible, but nevertheless, NBC finally two days ago had an account of how the government was running the guns into Mexico. ABC still MIA, but CBS has been doing a very decent job, uh, although they've kind of put the kibosh on the TV time of their investigative reporter, but she's still on their website. And Fox has been doing this almost daily. Uh, William Lajeunesse has been in Arizona this week going down to Mexico with his camera. Uh, it's hardly a vacation and they're going to keep the reporting coming, I'm very sure. So uh, we, we now have email that explain they weren't doing this for any law enforcement purpose. Not that you could say running guns, losing the chain of custody of evidence uh, and and say that that's an investigation. Oh, sure. Um, and besides, our guys can't go into Mexico. They can't go in armed. Even if they have papers to go, they're going to go the way you and I would have to go, which is unarmed. Uh, not a good way to do an investigation of a drug cartel, I would think. And then the uh, the email showed what they really were up to. They really were up to changing the dial on the gun control debate. They wanted to do something to substantiate what's actually a lie, that 90% of the guns used in crime in Mexico come from the United States. Well, among the guns that could be traced, that the Mexicans thought could be traced, 
gun related crimes that would occur down in Mexico. Uh, some of their documents show they were actually pr pleased at the increase in violent crime in Mexico following the beginning of this program in October of uh, 2009. Now, Larry, Larry, looking at this, clearly we now have a, multiple people at the White House that's now come out who were aware of what was going on. We have guns being shipped out of Tampa down uh, into Honduras. Um, we have the El Paso Times reporting on the Sinaloa gang allowed to ship in thousands of kilos of cocaine by the U.S. government. Uh, what's really going on here uh, at the end of the day? I mean, this is massive. This makes Watergate uh, look like uh, something a choir boy would do in comparison. I mean, will this bring down Obama? Well, Richard Nixon uh, got into a cover-up, and that's what got him in trouble. And he wasn't trying to cover up some 200 bodies. But that's exactly what Obama did, certainly this week, when Melson was allowed to move laterally from the ATF to the Justice Department, and Obama and Holder obviously signed off on that. I mean, that's a big deal when the head of one of your agencies is being transferred to another agency. And I think he's he's inescapably got ownership now, and ISA is certainly going to use that point. And he will articulate it, and hopefully other Republicans will learn from him how to sing this song, because if enough of them start to talk about it and make it as it should be, as big an issue as the jobs killing that Obama's been doing. He's killing two things, jobs and Mexicans. <laughs> and uh, that ought to be the focus of what the opposition party is talking about. Both are true, both are accurate, both, you know, nobody hardly yet has seen the Fast and Furious as a, as a big issue because the Democrat media has been covering rather well. But I think that is beginning to change. Uh, that's what we've seen. Even the number of interviews that we've been doing here has gone up sharply this week following what happened with Melson. So it seems to me that the word is finally out that, oh, the government was on a crime spree. Uh, what is going on here? And um, I think now the, uh, the big networks and some of the big papers are, they're going to either have to, to get into this are they going to continue to lose circulation and coverage? Now, Larry, in closing, uh, they've been caught perjuring themselves. The head of the ATF has had to step down. It's come out that a whole bunch of federal agencies were involved and that this was directed uh, by the White House. Uh, so where does this go? A, where do you see this investigation going? But B, from your own analysis, what was really going on here? Because you've got the drug dealing, all of it. Well, some of the um, email now, I think, are going to put Mr. And Newell, Mr. Newell in jail for perjury. I mean, I think it's a clear-cut case because his denials under oath about w deliberately walking guns into Mexico are now blown out of the water because Newell, back in 10, back in the middle of this whole mess, was pleading with three guys on the National Security Council in the White House to, hey, can't you convince the Mexicans to cooperate with us so we can try to keep track of the guns when they go south of the border? So there's the admission that he had lied under oath. <laughs> they were letting the guns go south of the border. And the... Um, what now? I'm sorry. What was the other question? Well, no, I mean, I understand that it's a way to blame the Second Amendment domestically, but why ship the guns into Mexico? What's the motive there to destabilize it? Blame the problems on Mexico again on the Second Amendment? I mean, I guess that's my own. I mean, I've answered my own question. Uh, any final views on that? Then I've got one more question for you, Larry Pratt. They wanted to hammer gun owners and gun ownership. They, uh, in fact, one of the email was talking about, did any of our guns turn up in Fast and Furious? We want to have a demand letter uh, go out to the southwestern state gun stores. And sure enough, they did it even after they got caught. Well, we need more gun control of the, civil, uh, of the civilians in this country. And so that was what they were up to, clear as day, this whole 
episode, part of the phony number of how many guns we sent down to Mexico from gun stores and gun owners. It's all concocted. We're talking about 15% uh, at most. And so they would have had to send a lot more guns down to really change the numbers. And perhaps if nobody had blown the whistle, that's exactly what they would have done. The, the only good thing about a U.S. law enforcement agent getting killed and the guns traced back to Fast and Furious is that that's when the whistleblower said, that's it. We told them that would happen, and now we're going public. Well, there's no doubt that if the Republican Party has the will, they can bring Obama down like Nixon. The only question is, um, do they want to go along with business as usual? and uh, allow the president to engage in these type of activities. Now, in closing, uh, briefly, Larry, uh, of GunOwners.org, I want to get into some articles that I have out of the Orleans County record in Massachusetts. Uh, I've got them out of Indiana. I've got them out of Arizona. I've got them all over the country where they're raiding gun dealers, confiscating all their guns, and not even charging them where gunsmiths at their houses are being raided, people buying 500 rounds of ammo are being raided, uh, they're going and questioning people that buy rifles. So while the government is being caught shipping guns all over Latin America and, sh and allowing drug cartels to ship narcotics in, uh, according to federal documents that have been filed in court, they're, they're really going in an extrajudicial way after uh, after gun dealers and others. Uh, what's going on here? The, one of the uh, whistleblowers pointed out that they were trying to change the narrative by having some big juicy case that they could show to the American people why more gun control was needed. And that was this suggestion. It, it came via a whistleblower, I should say, but it was an attempt to change the perception as soon as Cheryl Atkinson had aired her first story about uh, John Dodson, one of the, the first whistleblower to go public. And they were hoping they could have a media campaign of their own to, to uh, make themselves look good again. And so I think that's what all of this harassment is. But plus, let's face it, we've never had somebody as anti-gun as Eric Holder and Barack Obama in these two top positions. And so partly out of ideological drive, uh, they're doing this because this is really the only avenue available to them is administratively using their executive powers. Uh, the Congress isn't going along with this. And by the way, one of the things we're going to be uh, uh, telling the Congress in, in the course of things when we can schedule it in uh, the email that we send out to our members asking them to get in touch with their congressman is if you vote to refund Obamacare in the next continuing resolution, which comes up for a vote at the end of September or before that, but they have to have a new budget October 1st. If you vote to, re to continue funding that, continue funding the program that blocked the reimportation of rifles and some shotguns uh, by uh, the federal uh, boys at the State Department, in this case, and BATF. If you uh, vote to um, uh, do it a, a number of other things and do not defund those functions the administrative harassment that is being conducted right now by this anti-gun administration then you will have we won't believe when you tell us that you're against Obamacare that you're against the the banning of the reimportation of these firearms and all those kinds of things we'll tell you that that's a lie and that that's the message that we're going to be sending to the to the um, Congress all right, Larry Pratt, thank you so much for being out there and putting out your legislative alerts. People can sign up at gunowners.org for those free alerts, or they can sign up and become a paying member because you are the only no compromise Second Amendment organization out there. And there's no doubt if you hadn't been there over the last few decades, we wouldn't have a Second Amendment today. Larry Pratt, Gunners of America, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back, my friends. We'll look at Ron Paul 2012 and how can we take this country back? It's InfoWars Nightly News. Be sure and check the website, InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv forward slash news. We're now joined by longtime liberty activist Gary Franchi, who's been very successful in everything he's done from promoting Aaron Russo's great film, America, Freedom to Fascism, to making documentary films and producing his own daily TV show, The Reality Report. I wanted to get Gary on to talk about 
his ideas of how we can hopefully uh, even energize the population more to a higher level to ensure that Ron Paul wins the Republican nomination for president in 2012. Gary, great to have you here with us, my friend. Alex, thanks for having me on this new format. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations on the work you've been doing as well. Liberty is rising and tyranny is certainly freaking out about it. And, and later I've got a question about Illinois because you're up there with the 75 years the guy's facing uh, because he dared film the police in public. But first, uh, this hoax that Ron Paul can't win, even though he's a top tier candidate in the top three uh, in every poll, every straw poll. Uh, what's your view on that? Is the hoax successful? Uh, actually, I believe the hoax is going to backfire on itself because when you have the media parroting talking points that are being handed down from on high and the people seeing different results in their own investigative research online, these two these two worlds collide and it causes the American people to realize what's actually happening and make the sound judgments that we hope that they would make. So I think in the end, this hoax is going to backfire and it's up to the alternative media. It's up to the people themselves to make the, the ultimate choice. Well, the hoax began to backfire just a few weeks ago when even The Daily Show had this huge compilation of every network saying the same thing. Well, number one is this, number two is that, number four is this person, never mentioning who was number three. Or in polls where he was number two, they would mention number one and number three. Or if he won the New Hampshire straw poll, which is even more coveted than Iowa, no coverage. So it has backfired, but still, some people say, yeah, I like Ron Paul, but he can't win. Ron Paul wasn't even in the top five three and a half years ago in the 2008 election. He's in the top three right now, and I think it's mission number one to get the word out that he is the only person who isn't an establishment candidate, the only person who isn't bought and paid for, like Obama, Rick Perry, uh, people uh, like Mr. Carbon Tax, Mr. Obamacare author Mitt Romney. Uh, what's your take on uh, the two guys that the system is pushing, Mitt Romney and Rick Perry? Well, uh, the world is soon going to see our first attack ad that we're going to be producing. Uh, you're going to hear the people are hearing it here first, actually, uh, with our revolution pack. Uh, we're producing a commercial to go after Romney, to go after Perry, and expose them as the the plastic men that they are, and the. I think that they're just, they're just the polished central casting uh, figures that the American people have been sort of groomed to accept. Uh, they spit out the talking points that come down from the Republican Party, uh, they, told, they told the party line, and they are uh, easily corruptible through all the different lobbying money and, and through their, their, dirty, their dirty campaign finance work. So uh, the, people, the people are going to see this through the work that we're doing with the Revolution PAC and through alternative media. Isn't it coffin nails for Perry? And, of course, for Mitt Romney, for their campaigns, if Ron Paul brings up that Mitt Romney's a carbon taxer and gets praised by Al Gore, that Mitt Romney wrote Obamacare, that, that, that Rick Perry was the chief of staff for the presidential campaign of uh, Al Gore, and then in 93 supported Hillary Care, NAFTA superhighways, uh, Bilderberg meetings, forced inoculations of Gardasil. I mean, Rick Perry, it's hard to imagine somebody worse and more fake than this guy. I think Ron Paul needs to go on the attack. I know he's a gentleman, but now is the time to go on the attack. What's your view on that? Well, I think we have a short window of opportunity where Ron could actually come out and, and go on the offensive. Um, you know, those two candidates, Rick Perry and, and Mitt Romney, they have so much baggage. They have so many, so many angles that we could pierce their armor with uh, that, I mean, you just, you went down a whole laundry list. Uh, Ron Paul, I believe he should go on the attack, but in some, I mean, there's, there's two schools of thought, you know, taking the high road and then there's people that can go on the offensive like, like we can through, the, through different media outlets, through different PACs and organizations. Uh, we can do the dirty work and the heavy lifting that Ron Paul just can't do. Well, I agree with that at a certain point, but when I had Ron Paul on the radio a few days ago, he said, look, I want their their agenda and policies to speak for themselves. But I said, Congressman, respectfully, the public doesn't know. They think it's a joke that these guys are big carbon taxers and, and socialist Hillary care lovers. Uh, you need to get the word out. And he said, well, he said, I do see your point. And so I think it's important for Ron Paul himself 
to come out against these guys. And when Ron Paul finally agreed with me was when I said, look at Rick Perry coming out and saying he's now against the Federal Reserve. This shows how successful the message of liberty has become that Ron Paul isn't just some voice in the wilderness, that establishment neocons are now having to basically take on his political colorations. I think Ron will have an opportunity if, if his handlers allow him to take the gloves off. Um, you know, Ron has a, an established uh, cadre of individuals around him that are assisting him through the campaign. And I think that they're, they do have a specific strategy, and it's hard for them to deviate from some of those strategies. So I think the only opportunity he will have is either if he puts out his own campaign ads, going on the offensive, or if he just goes after them like a pit bull in some of these next upcoming debates. Uh, the debates get a lot of coverage, and I think as we're dwindling down to these top-tier candidates, uh, the opportunities are going to increase. So there's, he's got to capitalize on those moments. Well, he certainly does. Uh, it's just that Rick Perry and Mitt Romney are simply Barack Obama 2.0, another plastic fake Ken doll uh, whose real policies are the polar opposite of what they claim. Shifting into other uh, issues, you know, Ron Paul has been spot on about the inflation tax, the private central banks wrecking our society. Uh, and now, even the Wall Street Journal has reported internal memos at Goldman Sachs are telling some of their biggest investors, get ready for a total implosion of our economy in the next six months, but they're telling their general investors everything's going to be rosy. Uh, does that concern you that even Goldman Sachs internally is talking about a total collapse of society? Well, I think it, I think yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm, you know, Alex, we, you have been talking about this for years. Ron Paul's been talking about this for years. Uh, we've been reporting on these things for many, many years. So uh, it really shouldn't come as any surprise that when you have a, a nation based on a fiat, fiat currency, you have a Federal Reserve system that bailouts uh, trillions upon trillions of dollars, uh, just devaluing the currency. Um, but the, the, there are results. There are results that occur based on those decisions, and collapse is one of them. So it's up to the American people to brace for impact as we move into the, this fallout that's, that's going to happen from these decisions. Gary, I agree with you, and I think it's absolutely central, something that Ron Paul's talked a lot about when I gave a speech with him six years ago uh, outside Austin in Bastrop. Uh, he made the point that when they implode the global system because of the derivatives time bomb, this impossible to pay back fraudulent Ponzi scheme black hole, that the system that has engineered the crisis is going to pose as a savior, and that it was essential to expose that they were the authors uh, of all of the economic and political pain that we're going through, or they will pose as the saviors and get even more power out of it. Uh, in closing, I want to get your take on a story that's gotten international attention. A 41-year-old mechanic who filmed police uh, in public, he has now been uh, charged and is facing life in prison for taping the police. And the police know that federal and state courts have thrown this out. There's no perception of privacy when you're in public. They know the law doesn't say that. But people are actually being sent to prison for videotaping police. I think this is one of the scariest things I've seen happen in modern modern times that police and then prosecutors would actually go after people for doing something they know is legal and then tell uh, basically brain dead juries uh, that it was the law that they can't do this and send people to prison. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, the law they're using is the Illinois wiretap uh, statute and that states that you cannot videotape somebody that and, and include audio. Uh, when I used to work for a large retail outfit and we would do security and we would actually monitor shoplifters, uh, one of the things, that was one of the main points that we were told is that we cannot audio tape the people who we are uh, actually reviewing, the, the shoppers. So we could only use video. And now every, every single camera, every single iPhone or whatever you want to use uh, records both. The only way to get around that situation in the state of Illinois is either change the law completely or you have to wear a, a placard on you that says, I am not using audio, I'm only recording video. Um, it's unfortunate that, this, that we have a day and age where police feel threatened 
uh, you know, these are the these are the people who are tasked to protect and serve us. And if we're not able to hold them accountable, if we're not able to record their their civic duties and hold them accountable for it, then this nation is lost. So. We have to attack the situation on multiple fronts by raising awareness for this statute itself that needs to be reversed. We also need to raise awareness that the police, if they're going to put cameras on us in every street corner, at every red light station, and on the dashboards of every police cruiser, if they're going to put cameras on us, then we have the equal right to put cameras on them in the same exact capacity. Well, Gary... So it's up to the American people to step up and fight this. Well, Gary, that's my point, is that... According to the court rulings, I understand they're saying it's the law, but the truth is, in a private business, you can record audio and video. They're just claiming you don't have this right. And just like police have squad car videos and then audio mics on their ties or on their shirt, uh, there's no perception of privacy. Wiretapping is is going and tapping into somebody's phone line, or 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 wiretapping is planning recording devices in somebody's house where there's privacy. And uh, that's why it's being thrown out of court, but it, it's it's really a scary phenomenon. Well, Gary, thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just, uh, yeah. Go ahead and make your point. I was just going to say they they're, they're they're misapplying the law by stating that the wiretapping is being done through a camera with a microphone, and you just stated that it has to be done through a telephone of some sort. Exactly. That's what's scary about this is that they know, they know the courts have been throwing this out for years with 12 states trying this and the system doesn't care. They just keep going and going and going. Well, folks can find out more at your different uh, websites. Tell us about the reality report briefly and then also the new political pact you've set up to try to uh, run ads nationally uh, going after those that are demonizing Ron Paul. Reality Report, we put out a weekly show and uh, we try to cover some of the hot button current events issues and give people solutions to act on those issues. Uh, RealityReport.tv is the website for that. And the Revolution Pack uh, is a super pack that we uh, or organize with uh, leading scholars, authors, and activists uh, such as Tom Woods. And we're, our focus is on raising funds so that we can put out commercial, high quality professional commercial advertisements to support Ron Paul. And the beautiful thing about our super PAC is that we can accept unlimited donations. There's no cap on how much an individual corporation or organization can donate to us. So we, we have a, a great opportunity to raise literally millions upon millions of dollars from wealthy individuals. So we hope that people out there will, uh, will, will seek us out, go to revolutionpack.com and, uh, and support our efforts to get Ron Paul into the White House. Well, Gary Franchi, you're definitely a man in the arena, and um, great uh, luck. Go with God uh, when it comes to going after Rick Perry and Mitt Romney with their real, real records. Thank you so much, Gary, for joining us. It's a pleasure being here, Alex. Pleasure having, having you. Me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there goes Gary Franchi. That is it for the second edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, I want everybody to have a great holiday coming up on Monday, and we'll be back here live Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central, that's 8 p.m. Eastern, for InfoWars Nightly News. The websites are InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv forward slash news. I'm Alex Jones, signing off from the front lines of the InfoWar. Have a great and blessed weekend.